Hello, in this video we will be working on repairing an inverter 12220. And as I have said in previous videos, to repair a machine we must first of all understand the circuit board. We need to examine what we see to know what to measure and which readings to take from the instruments in order to proceed with the repair. So let's quickly see what this inverter here consists of. From what we see, it has many transformers, which are actually forward converters, not anything else, which always convert 12V to 240V DC. Here we see the MOSFETs that drive the transformers to produce the output voltage. We see the oscillator that drives the MOSFETs and at their output to the transformers. They are all paralyzed, and with these diodes here, we rectify, and below the capacitors, and the coils smooth the voltage, the DC voltage to 230V. Around 240V there, we will find them here. After that, these DC 230V need to be converted to AC. So here is the circuit that does DC-AC conversion with the MOSFETs, the oscillators. The oscillator is here. We have a frequency divider and a driver, which drives the transistors and the small ones here. Four transistors, which continuously drive the MOSFETs, which work as switches to perform the DC to AC conversion. And of course, then the output comes out here, which goes directly to the socket above, which outputs 220 AC. Now the output is made here, which goes directly to the socket above, which now outputs 220 AC. Here we have an integrated circuit, which controls the displayable state, its indicators of the inverter. And after we saw the inverter's two levels, Let's apply power to see what the problem is. So I've connected my power supply here, providing 12V. We see that there is a small current draw of 0.9A. It seems that something is operating. Let's measure and see. First of all, at the output of the power supplies, if they output these 240V from the 12, that is if it reaches 240V, I will set my multimeter to DC. And I will place the two of the terminals where after the rectification and filters, it should provide 240 VDC. Let's see it. We see 239V. Now let's measure so if the transformers alternating are working current they appear to be functioning properly. We saw earlier. I will set the multimeter to AC and measure at the output. I notice that I have nothing at the output. So I understand that my problem, I have now isolated the stage. Which stage my problem is in? It is in the DC stage of the AC circuit. So here I will also take my measurements. It works here. It doesn't work here. The problem is at this point. I have measured the MOSFETs. None of them are short circuited. I have also measured the voltages going to the connectors here. The voltages are normal. The 15V needed for the connectors to operate. So I will use the oscilloscope to continue. First of all, I need to familiarize myself with the electrolytic capacitors it has. I have seen that its IC is a 4060. 
which I see here requires at pin 16, I have this 15V voltage where it is needed, and I will see if it produces waveforms that are needed with the oscilloscope. From down there, I have seen that the an integrated circuit is a which is a NAND gate chip where the voltage reaches pin 14. The DC voltage required for it to operate. Let's now see what we can measure with the oscilloscope. I will first measure at the oscillator, then check again to see if oscillation occurs. If the oscillator is working, I will see that it produces oscillation. So I will check what oscillation so This calculation works. And I will move on to the next calculation, which is what drives the transistors. And I will have seen, assuming that at pin 11 is its output. So I will measure directly on pin 11. Let's see if it produces an output to drive the transistor. I will notice that I have no output on the pin. It produces nothing. It is dead, so I will go to its input, which is on pin 12, the first input, because at 13 there is input again. I will see at pin 12 that there is oscillation. And there are also the 50 hertz that I need. So I have at 12, so I will measure at 13 now to see if I have oscillation. I will notice that at 13, I don't have, I only have one parasitic and if I follow the printed depth, I will see that it goes to a resistor right next to it. So if I measure the input of the resistor, I will see if the oscillation is present here. I measure and see that the oscillation is present and the 50 hertz over there that I need, which seems to have a broken resistor or something is stuck after the resistor. It shorts it. I have measured the resistor. It's correct. I also applied the locked in and I noticed that when I remove the locked in on the disc and on one pin and on the other pin, I have the oscillation that I need. So most likely, the locked part might be broken, causing a short circuit, causing interference with the oscillation at its input. After replacing the locked parts, the inverter does not operate normally. The oscillations returned again and caused the locked parts to produce AC at its input. At this point, I want to tell you that I found a nice video that explains how the DCAC converter works. I will put it in the description below so you can watch it and understand the measurements we made. As for the old measuring devices, I have explained in previous videos what works and what we measure on them. And as I have said before, we never do a repair by chance. We always isolate stages, measure with the instruments, and find the burnt component, which we replace. We do not repair components simply to cause the damage. If you liked the video below, you can follow me on my page and on Facebook. Thank you.